Yeah, it would. Mm. So this is probably one of the most feared snakes on the planet. And one of Uncle Mike's favorites. Look how he's smiling. <laughs> he likes the snake. <laughs> Hey guys, it's Bryce here. Today I'm with Uncle Mike. Uncle Mike is basically a specialist in venom and what do you do Uncle Mike? I extract venom from snakes. I keep 500 venomous snakes and we extract the venom. So we're going to be milking snakes today which is really exciting and no you don't get milk out of snakes. What do you get out of snakes? Because they don't have milk. Yeah, we, ex <laughs> we extract the venom. Yeah. It's, it's called milking but yeah, it's not really milking. It's just yeah. getting the snake to release the venom into a beaker. So yes, that's one like this do. down here. So now what are you doing with the beaker? Why is there plastic over the beaker? Well, it uh, stimulates um, the feel that the snake will have when it bites. So the fangs penetrate through the plastic. And uh, that stimulation that it feels like for a snake that it's biting something, then lets him release his venom. And then it gets released inside the beaker. Right, here we have a Cape Cobra. Naja Nivea. Yeah, and let's see what we're going to get from him. Nothing so far. <laughs> there yeah, we go. Okay. Nice yeah. few drops of venom there. Nice flow there. Yeah. That will definitely either ruin your day or ruin your life. Yep. Potent, potent neurotoxic venom. But there's been a recent case of one with like purely cytotoxic effects, which is interesting. Yep, that was interesting. Oh yeah, yeah, the camera's running, yes. You just hold the tail. Right, the snake we have here is the brown forest cobra. The snake that is found from South Africa into East Africa. The front section of the body is brown, it goes darker in the middle, and then the tail is pitch black. This is a large cobra. These snakes can grow 2.8 meters in length. The venom from the one in the eastern part of the African subcontinent seems to be more cytotoxic, but there is a neurotoxic component. So we're going to get the venom from the snake and get the snake to bite through this plastic. So this is actually your largest true cobra. Your king cobra is larger, but it's not an actual cobra. It's a not leopard. in the species of. Yeah, not in in terms of where it's classified. Yeah. Yes, it's not Naja. So forest cobras are your longest or largest true cobra. Right, and these snakes are very powerful. They struggle all the time. Yeah, good. Ooh. And they do that also. <laughs> they let it Masking come out the back all end. all over me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this one doesn't smell as bad as the cape cobras though. I don't know if he wants to bite again. You want to bite again, boy? Yeah, and a few more drops of venom there. Okay, there we go. So this is the forest cobra. This is one of the 10 snakes that is used in the manufacture of our polyvalent snake bite antivenom. Okay, so here we have a beautiful puff adder that we're going to now milk. And how many vials approximately would you need if you were to be tagged by one of these guys? So typically we'll start with five ampules of polyvalent antivenom. Right, um, that should normally do the trick. Um, if it doesn't, we'll increase it to 10. That should normally do it. And there we go, wow. He's super <laughs> eager to bite. <laughs> yeah. Wow. See the venom from two puff adders. Incredible that will much. spoil your day. <laughs> And potentially boil your day because <laughs> sometimes when you get bitten it looks like you've dipped your hand into boiling acid and you get Yeah, it's not pleasant. Boiling oil should I say rather. The snake you see here is the Snada Cobra. Niger and the Lurfera from Southern Africa. These are large cobras. 
they can grow over 2.5 meters in length and when they get big they become massive as you see this snake here um, these snakes are very very common in southern africa they don't cause many snake bites though but the venom of the snake is used in the manufacture of a polyvalent snake bite antivenom so we're going to extract the venom from the snake we're getting him to bite through here oh there we go you can see the venom there. That's a lot of venom. That is a lot of venom, yeah. <laughs> you wouldn't want that in you. No. Uh -uh. And they have quite a bit of, quite a lot of cytotoxic components in there too, right? Yeah, it's neurotoxic and cytotoxic, yeah. Not, right. a, not a cocktail I would drink at all. Right. Or so. eat. We're just gonna... No, the... uh, so we... I just want to show the size of this snake. It's an absolutely enormous snout of cobra. <laughs> like really, really big. Look at that. Yeah, and this, powerful this, too. This one's about one or two weeks old. <laughs> one or two weeks. <laughs> you, you've had it for uh, a year or so. Yeah, I know. I've probably had this snake <laughs> ten years. Just for them to get this size. And once again, this venom is used in the manufacture of our polyvalent. And we're going to get the snake to bite through there. Go. Oblige us with your big open mouth. There we go. There That's a see. lot of venom. Yeah, now there is a lot of venom there. Yeah. So as you can see, these animals are really well looked after. I mean, for a snake to get this size and be on venom line shows you these snakes are living the life. They're living the dream here. Yeah. <laughs> this now and again, they must just give us some venom, but otherwise we leave them alone and they're happy and we're happy. They get some nice meals and look all pretty for the camera. And this is typical what uh, cobras do. They hang on and chew and then they get annoyed. So sometimes Don't let it do that to you. Sometimes <laughs> it's difficult to get the snake off. There we go, he's off now. But yeah, there you can see the snake. Beautiful snouted cobra. Really, really big. Right, the snake I'm holding here is called the Jameson's Mamba, black-tailed Jameson's Mamba. You can just show them the black tail there. So it's a, a green beautiful mamba. Beautiful black tail. With a black tail that's found in Central and East Africa. And the venom from this snake is used in the manufacture of our polyvalent antivenom. It's one of the 10 venoms that goes into the manufacture of our polyvalent antivenom. So we're going to get venom from the snake. Like all mumbers, the fangs are right in the front of the mouth. Small little fangs, but perfect injection needles, hypodermic needles. And there we can see nice flow of venom from this. Quite snake. a bit of venom there. Eh? Yeah. And it's a clear, it's clear like, venom. It's like water, yeah. Yeah, I'm not going to test it like water though. <laughs> <laughs> Black tail Jameson's mamba. So yeah. it's Dendra aspis, Jamesone. Camose. Camose. Yeah. So it's a different subspecies to the normal Jameson's mamba. The normal Jameson's mamba has a yellow tail and each scale has black around the scale so you get this yellow checkered tail. So this is probably one of the most feared snakes on the planet. And one of Uncle Mike's favorites. Look how he's smiling. <laughs> he likes the snake. <laughs> this is the black mamba. <laughs> All right. um, a really big one. This is a normal adult size. In good condition. You can see there. Snake is in uh, very good condition. Very uh, powerful. Yeah, they, they have good body strength in them. The body color is normally lighter dark gray or uh, lighter dark brown. Inside of the mouth is only pitch black. Right, that's where they get the name from. This is one of the 10 snake venoms we use in the manufacture of our polyvalent antivenom. So we're going to extract the venom from this snake by getting the snake to bite through there. And he's a bit reluctant, but we will get him to bite. Go. Bite. Bite. 
Wow. See, it shows you even the most feared snake is like probably the has been the most reluctant today to actually release its venom. Yeah, this snake's been in captivity for a while, so he's he's not into. Yeah, he's like biting mode. Just give me some food. <laughs> <laughs> Very powerful though. Right. At least it's not musking on me. I hate their musk. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so this is the black mamba, Dendro Aspis polylepis. And the venom is clear, it's like water. Very powerful neurotoxic venom. The venom will cause progressive weakness as it paralyzes your body. It's one of the two snakes in southern Africa that people actually die from each year. Correct, yeah. Okay, so now I'm setting up a little holder thingy for holding the beaker. Because this beaker is big. Um, you can guess what snake that's gonna be. Yep. Bitters Gabonica. No, sorry. Price, you just made him a huge muck up. Not Bitters Gabonica, Bitters Rhinoceros. Also known as the West African Gaboon Viper. So, obviously, there are two species Bitters Gabonica and Bitters Rhinoceros. Um, rhinoceros, Rhinoceros. Pronounce it how you wanna pronounce it. Don't butcher me for how I pronounce it. Big beaker, big snake, big venom yield. Exciting. All right, so the snake we have here is the West African Gaboonader. Now, Gaboonaders, the venom used to be supplied from both West and East African Gabunaders. At first it was just thought as a subspecies, today they reckon as two separate species. However, we still supply the venom of both. So Bitis Gabonica and Bitis Rhinoceros, both the venoms go into the manufacture of our polyvalent snake bite antivenom. So we're going to extract the venom now from this West African Gabunader. So these snakes have massive fangs, massive venom glands. They can produce a lot of venom. We will see what we can get from this snake. Jeepers! Alright, so we just hook the fangs on the edge like that. Okay, hook your fang again there. And, and then we're going to just massage the venom glands. And Get a bit more venom from the snake. But yeah, if I look at the quantity, it's a lot more than we had from any other snake this, this morning. We've got incredibly huge fangs. This species is actually the record holder for the longest fangs of what, 50 millimeters? That was what was claimed for a snake that was killed in Kenya. Um, but yeah. I believe there are other snakes that rival or even surpass them in length. I agree. Yeah. But uh, for Africa... Nonetheless, huge fangs. For Africa, this is the snake with the longest fangs. And uh, short, stocky snakes. Uh, very powerful. Right. The snake you see is the green mamba, Dendroaspis angustic seps. It's found in southern Africa and then into East Africa, up to Kenya. This is my favorite mamba. Really, really pretty snakes. They Uncle pretty. Mike likes the feisty ones. <laughs> <laughs> it is, yeah, these snakes are very pretty. And they, oftentimes you can see yellow specks or flecking on them, which is really nice. A really secretive snake too. Don't often come in contact with humans and bites are Really Very rare, rare bites, yeah, it's normally people catching them, they can bit them. So this is one of the 10 venoms used in the manufacture of our polyvalent snake bite antivenom. And so we extract the venom from these snakes for the antivenom manufacture. And as you can see, we're going to show you all 10 of the species that are made up of the polyvalent antivenom. Yeah, there you can see the snake. These snakes normally have a pink inside of the mouth as opposed to the black mamba which has a dark mouth, black or light grey. So this is pink. So, so pretty. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> they are pretty, yeah. And they feel so nice also. They got that like smooth 
yet matte feeling. Um, obviously yeah. so they can glide through the trees and that really quickly because they are an arboreal snake. Hardly ever seen on ground. Now they just come to ground sometimes when the female wants to find a decent place to lay eggs. Then you can find them on the ground. Otherwise they strictly in the trees. Such a stunning snake. They are pretty, yeah. Really are. Cool. So we here have a runkles. Yeah, the name runkles comes from the Dutch runhuls, which means ring neck, because of these white markings on the neck here. Right, and that's where it gets that common name. Right, and these snakes, you'll hear the venom squirt. You can see it squirting out there very wow. nicely. And another squirt from that side. Yeah. Quite a big ve venom yield from such a small snake. Yeah, because they spit their venom, they need to have a larger venom in them so that they can keep on spraying more venom. Interesting. So this is the same species as Beth at home, a nice black runkos also. So now I'm just going to be changing the beaker from the runkos to Mozambican spitting cobra. So this has been such a privilege spending today with Uncle Mike, he's so knowledgeable and yeah, I'll probably need to find something to cover my face with because Mozambican spitting cobras can spit at you even while they necked. So let's change the beaker up. So the Mozambican spitting cobra, another common name for it in South Africa is called Mfezi. Here we come with the Mfezi. The snake you see is called the Mozambique spitting cobra. A very, very common snake in Southern and East Africa. And I say east into southern Tanzania, right? Also in northern uh, Namibia and into uh, Angola, you find these snakes. Um, they're normally a lighter dark brown on the back. The interstitial skin is black, so you get this net effect on the body, almost like uh, fishnet stockings. The underside is yellow, pink, or apricot color with a number of dark bands on the front surface. There we go, nice. Nice lot of venom there. You can see their venom is completely different to different species. So different species do have different colors of venom because their venom contains different components. The venom from the Mozambique spitting cobra is mainly cytotoxic. Uh, it attacks the body tissue. The attack is very superficial. It's normally the skin and subcutaneous fatty layer. Small quantity of venom will cause a small necrotic lesion. Large quantities of venom can cause large necrotic lesions. And in about a week's time, that necrotic lesion will be debrided, meaning they will remove the dead tissue. Okay guys, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much, Uncle Mike, for teaching us all so much. And I just want to say thank you on behalf of all us snake keepers for everything that you do. And please stay safe. I'll try. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that like button, subscribe if you're new, and go follow Uncle Mike on all his social media pages. Links will be down below, so go check it out, website included. Thank you guys so much for watching. Remember to go out, learn, explore, inspire, Cheers. and live it. Cheers.